every economics major knows that when the government spends a lot of money, it causes inflation because that's not real production and it crowds out private investment. We need to save money and invest in private investment so we can create more jobs and produce more goods and reduce inflation. We were seeing real results like a reduction in homelessness, a reduction in crime, you know, and prosperity. That might be justifiable, but that's not what's happening. The borders are wide open, crime is soaring, and we've got prices increasing. So how is that helping the working class where a lot of the crime actually occurs? It's not in the high income areas. It's in the middle class and the lower you know, working class neighborhood that crime is soaring. So we're not protecting our people. This is not a formula for prosperity. I fully support that. In the time of crisis, that's what government is for, to help give us a helping hand. And mo most of it was actually in the form of a loan. And as long as it's a loan and it's paid back when, you know, they are prospering, I think that's perfectly legitimate. You know, the crisis of COVID was just very heartbreaking for a lot of people. It wasn't just the businesses. It was everybody. Everybody was affected by COVID. So the government definitely has a role, but when we spend money, we need to be accountable for every dollar. I mean, look at homelessness. We've spent two to three hundred million dollars with no result. Homelessness has actually increased and I'm in housing. So it really bothers me. We really should find some solutions for for the homeless crisis and not spend money like more building of home affordable housing that enriches developers and not really providing a good, solid home for for people. Well, I think they need to understand what is the strategic importance for United States. Now, is Ukraine really that important? I think when we got into the war, we shouldn't have gotten into the war. It should have been NATO's responsibility. They're on the border of Europe, not the United States. And for us to go in, we just made Russia even more, you know, antagonistic towards us. That was unnecessary. Now, Israel is our partner. It's a strategic partner in the Middle East. We have vital oil interests in the Middle East. So we need to evaluate who, which countries are our vital strategic partners. Taiwan, TMSC, you know, the, 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 the chip, the advanced microchip is very strategic to our AI abilities. So they're very important to America. And Taiwan's location is geographically very important, you know, in the South Pacific. So. So we cannot just spend money to say, oh, we're going to fight the Russians. We're going to fight everyone. We can't fight everyone. We don't have endless dollars. Well, first, I would inject some rationality for every, there shouldn't be no earmarks. Every bill should be evaluated on its merits and we should debate it and no passing the bill without reading it. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty rational about that and I'm very reasonable in debate. So I would encourage all the Congress people to evaluate the bills and talk about it amongst ourselves and not treat each side as an enemy. Republicans, Democrats should work together to unite our country. This divisive policy is a CCP strategy, divide and conquer. And that's what's ruining the United States. And the Americans are falling for it. And Democrats and Republicans all love America. So we need to work together. That's the first thing I would do is try to work across the aisle and bridge all the differences. I know that will be a challenge, but I am equipped to do that.